Hey, what is up guys? This is Yusuf here from TechDroids and welcome back to a brand new video on the channel and today we take a look at the best $1000 gaming PC build that you can build for the month of December 2016. So this is going to be the last PC build of 2016. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to all of them who are celebrating and I'm making this video just one day before Christmas or on the evening before Christmas. So if you're excited drop a thumbs up subscribe to the channel and let's get started with today's build and mind you this could be something like a last minute present or something you can give after christmas for new year or just a really good pc for gaming so with that being said let's get to the performance that this beast offers for one thousand dollars so this gaming pc is gonna smash all the gaming titles latest AAA titles in 1080p at max settings and in 1440p if you're going down the settings if you can go down with the settings a little bit in the modern AAA titles like Battlefield 1, Overwatch and other games then you can expect 1440p 60fps or else you can still get 1080p 60fps with this PC and this will also smash some of the moderately demanding games in 4k so in games like CSGO, World of Warcraft and League of Legends you can expect 4K and in some cases above 100 FPS. So with that being said, let's get started with the parts that make this performance possible. So for the CPU I went with the Intel Core i5-6600K. Now this just uh, falls short of the 6600K in two ways, with one with the lower clock speed and the ability to overclock. But this CPU is not bad, it comes with quad cores and 3.3 GHz. So quad cores means that it means compatibility, it maintains compatibility with most of the AAA titles and with the future titles as well. And it costs only 214 bucks, so stays in the budget and does the job. And if you go with the overclockable version of the CPU, you need a beefier motherboard, a CPU cooler and just will increase the budget in turn. But this comes with LG1151 socket compatibility, 3.3 GHz and just does the job for any game or for gaming and editing for that matter of fact. And this is the CPU. For the motherboard I went with the Gigabyte H110MA LG1151 motherboard. It is only 58 bucks, supports DDR4 and HDMI 1.4 for full HD output and does all the job that you need for it to do. It has USB 3.0 and it stays in the budget for the motherboard. For, mem for the memory, I went with the Corsair Vengeance LPX 16GB of DDR4 memory. It's clocked at 3000 MHz and it's 102 bucks. Now it's costly because it's DDR4 and it's of the highest clock speed. So this thing will do the job for everything. And it will maintain compatibility with games and editing softwares as it's 16GB. And 16GB is plenty enough for you to do all your job gaming video editing and all kinds of 3d rendering and down the line if you really want to upgrade you can add a, another 16 gigs and make it 32 gigs as our motherboard supports 32 gigs of ddr4 ram but i don't think so you'd be ne needing 32 gigs anytime soon for primary storage i went with the one terabyte of western digital blue hard drive now this runs at 7200 rpm and it is one terabyte that means it's thousand gigabytes and it will store all your bigger softwares, your games, your steam library and everything that you want to store offline or that's huge and for some fast storage I went with the Crucial Ballistics uh, sorry <laughs> Crucial MX300 275GB SSD now this is SATA 2.5 inch form factor and it costs only 80 bucks the hard drive costs 49 bucks and does the job and in total you have about 1300 1300 gigabytes of storage so the 275 gigs of ssd storage could be helpful for the os for your editing software and for the programs that you want to open up faster and in turn just work smoother and ssd can make the performance of a pc significantly faster when added so ssd is totally worth it and one terabyte of wd blue means you have a lot of storage for other things as well now for the power supply i went with the evga 700 watt 80 plus bond certified Cost only 56 bucks and will juice up the whole system. 700 watts is plenty enough, and down the line you can add stuff and need not worry about the power supply. And now for the graphic card, the star of the show, guys, and this was a tough choice for me. I went with the EVGA GeForce GDX 1070 Super Clocked Edition. Now, this has 8GB of GDDR5 memory with 
ACX 3.0 cooling, it supports or it has uh, LED fans, also supports DirectX 12 and that means it maintains compatibility with most of the AAA titles and the future games that will come with DirectX 12. And that ends the graphic card but the graphic card costs about 400 bucks is on the pricier side and it's a super clocked edition because it comes with a boost base clock of uh, 1594 and a boost clock of 1784 so that is worth it for every game 8 gigabytes doesn't make a you know uh, 8 gigabytes is plenty enough for any game out there and to house everything for this pc for the case i mean at the nzxt s340 black costs 65 bucks comes in a matte black pc case or matte black color and that's the job for everything just the best case of 2015 for me and that's it that's it guys if you enjoyed this pc build and um, give this video a massive thumbs up and subscribe to the channel i'll catch you guys in the next tech droids video